Um, once again, my name is Dennis Burrell <coughs> with Ventive Infrastructure. And the next area that we're going to talk about is uh, our concealed antennas. <clears throat> so what we have here is um, our raised access Wi-Fi, raised access floor Wi-Fi antenna. So, um, so basically what we did was we worked with uh, the number one uh, raised floor tile company in the, um, in the, uh, United, in the United States uh, to come up with a solution using their floor tile to come up with the antenna solution for specifically for um, customers that can't put anything on the walls or they're coming up with these new uh, architecturally sound and beautiful buildings and they don't want to see access points or they don't want to see antennas or anything hanging from the ceilings. Um, they just want something pristine, but they still want Wi-Fi. So we worked with this company to come up with this design. And basically what the design is, is one of their existing tiles. And we took, uh, we designed an antenna that actually operates in the tile. And what we do is we CNC mill out a certain depth of the tile, drill the holes, place the antenna in, and then we cover the antenna with a resin. So that once it hardens, you have a seamless solution that still looks like the floor tile. There's no difference between the height. Once you place the carpet over it after walking on it or anything as far as rolling equipment or anything on it after time, you won't see any indentations where you would know that there's an antenna. You would just think that it's a, a raised floor system. So this kind of gives a gives an outline of what, what it looks like. You have your permanent floor, then you have your mounting pedestals, uh, which are standard floor panels and the floor panel antenna. Access point, that's no particular access point, that's just an <laughs> illustration, so I haven't seen one like that yet. But anyway, and then, um, then you have your, your surface and then you have carpet or what other, um, whatever um, product covering it. We've looked at uh, simulated wood as a covering, carpet as well. And then um, based on Design the height of the access points, we think we can have an under the floor area of at least five inches where we can fit the access point. Now the access point doesn't have to go directly under the floor panel antenna. Um, it can mount to the pedestals. The antenna comes with uh, three, feet of, uh, three feet of cable length so that you can move the access point to different locations. It doesn't have to be directly under that floor panel antenna. So this was one of the deployments that we did in Philly where you can see on, on the far left, you see the, uh, the antenna installed. Uh, right here, we just have one before we put it in. And as you can see, some of the cables running and some of the electrical that's under the floor. And then this is once the carpet is down, so you, 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 will, you don't even see the antenna, you don't even know, it, know that it's there. Is this uh, Cisco Dart capable? Nice. <laughs> yes. Um, so just, and we can talk about, we worked with um, <clears throat> a major vendor to test one of these, and one of the requests was to come up with a solution that was Dart capable. Meaning native Dart connector or using Dart to RPT and C connector? Dart, uh, well, I thought the uh, Dart was RPT and C on the end, but the other end that plugs in. Yeah, is so, so with yes. a native Dart connector. Yes. Okay. Well, then everything's compatible that way. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, but compatible means a lot of different things <laughs> yeah. to a lot of different people. I mean, you you don't have a Dart connector. You no, we have, don't. No, we do not have, have a no. RPT. We do not have a Dart connector. Sorry. It's RPT and C. Right. Yes. <laughs> And how much is that cable, that DART to RPT RPT and C cable? That's the question. <laughs> so some of the characteristics of the antenna is a low profile, profile plane of design. Um, it supports three or four point access points. Um, it's aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing. It's easily movable within the floor tile grid. So we've also come out with some products that will help you lift it, lift the panel from the floor. And also, if you have to get underneath and you need to place the panel, we've come up with an easel that the panel sits on as well. So you don't have to worry about it falling, cracking, or those types of things. Um, then it withstands normal office activities and floor and low bearing requirements according to the Ceiling and Interior Systems Construction Association. <laughs> 
Not Cisco, but Cisca. <laughs> <laughs> so would that, like, say, if you were to throw, oh, I don't, I guess schools don't really have raised floors, but environment drops something heavy directly on the antenna or somebody's jumping around for some reason or something like that. It, it's fine, and um, I'll go in a couple of slides. I'll go over some of the low bearing testing and those types of things, but um, it would be fine. So some of the benefits of floor tile versus ceiling mount antennas, uh, aesthetics. You don't see any access points or antennas mounted on the wall or ceilings. Ease of installation, simpler and less expensive by this. We're talking about the equipment needed to install and pull cable, lifts, ladders. Then we're also talking about if it's unionized, the paying for the workers to come and actually do those types of things. Um, less planning and deploying uh, ceiling wall cable management the vertical runs, trays, hooks associated, and then the plenum versus PVC cable, if it's a plenum space, which is a more expensive cable. Um, upgrades, you support and maintenance associated with reconfiguring and upgrade the APs are easier and faster because you have faster access to the APs. And then scalability, future-proofing the network for increased density by running additional cable drops under the floor during the initial deployment. It's not as strenuous as going up a wall and over the ceiling um, when doing that. So forgive me if you're going to get to this. All of these are great benefits, mm -hmm. but they have nothing to do with wireless. Right. Is so, there a benefit to placing them down there from an RF perspective as opposed to in the ceiling, or is this solely a aesthetics, ease of installation, making my life easier so I don't have to deal with the union people on ladders, blah, 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 blah. So it's a, it's a combination of both, both, and we'll get to some of that, some of the okay. simulations and some of the testing. Perfect. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, it's great that you guys are doing this. I have some, some customers that have like raised ceiling floors where they have uh, mechanical space underneath. Mm -hmm. Covering those mechanical spaces is uh, very challenging from an RF perspective. Is there... Say raised ceiling floors? Well, oh, sorry, raised floors. They're like a... Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, a, a raised floor um, where there, there are people underneath working. Um, is there any, any thought of putting the antennas on the bottom side so that we could use the same enclosure for um, covering both? You mean like on the ceiling? Where are you working? I want to go see this. <laughs> yeah. That sounds kind of cool. That, that, that's, yeah, that's the first one for me. I haven't heard that one before. I was just curious. Um, I have one customer that would be very interested in that. The space station. We, <laughs> we have not looked into that. <clears throat> so this is, I know this is an odd chart, but just wanted to um, just um, point out some things. This is the spec sheet for the, uh, for the tile antenna. And as you can see, we have two versions. This is a 1250, and then we also have a 1500 version. Um, and the difference between those is the height. Uh, the, the uh, 1250 is 1.125 inches, and the 1500 is 1.15 inches. Um, then the load capacity. So we did three tests, uh, concentrated loads, uniform loads, and rolling loads. And that, that tells you the, the amount of uh, weight that they can stand doing each of the loads. And this is, um, <clears throat> this is very equivalent to the... Uh, original floor tiles that the company makes. Um, it's a dual band, three, six, three and six dBi gain, three dBi on 2.46 dBi on five gig. Um, it has oblong radiation patterns, and I'll discuss that a little more, but basically what it is is because it's a planar de design and it's more rectangular than square, you have vertical beam widths that are different in, say, the long axis versus the short axis of the uh, antenna. And knowing this, that you can actually take this and you, when you put it into your system, your Wi-Fi system, you can, you can put it in such a way, for instance, that I'll show later, if you have a design or you have a room where you're doing um, cubicles and you have an aisleway between the cubicles and you want to cover the cubicles, you can mount this such a way so that the radiation, the maximum radiation goes across cubicles instead of along. And then if you're in a room like this, everyone's sitting at a table like this, you can put the antenna so that the radiation goes the length instead of the width. And so, we'll discuss that a little later. So surveying, or doing like a predictive RF design, we're using like Ekahau. Yes. These antenna patterns are in the software, and you just put them on the floor, point yes. it up, and yes. And so done. the way that they're in Ekahau, yes, you put them on the floor, 
and you change the height to zero. To zero. Change the height to zero, but then you also have to change the angle to 180 on the, nice. so that it radiates up instead of down. Killer. And this is the 1500. The only difference, like I said, is uh, slightly heavier and the, uh, the height of the antenna. The, yes. your, your antenna pattern is on the left. Um, yes. That's, that's obviously tested in, in a lab or something. Yes. Have you seen what the antenna pattern looks like when you actually flush mount it into that concrete slab? That is in the concrete that's, slab. That's inside yes, the that's lab. Yes, that's inside the lab. Still, it still has that much yes. side. I would have thought the sides would have been a little more truncated. Yes. So I'd, like, I'd like to see some, something where there's, and not from this, but when you have people walking across it, you know, say you put in the floor of a mall, I mean, yeah, the, the pattern looks great, but what does it look like when you have 200 human bodies standing on top of the... That's a good question, know, does, and I actually have some <laughs> test data to show nice, you. Nice segue. <laughs> yeah. Like, playing right into your slide. Fantastic. Your checks in the mail. Has anyone, has anyone <laughs> deployed floor Wi-Fi? So we just... I mean, in this group? Oh, okay. No? I haven't. So okay. for... Uh, just curiosity. For us, uh, we just shipped our first 500 units to a customer. Um, that's going to be deploying this, um, and we'll be going. I'll be going in a couple of a month or so to actually do testing once they put it in the building to work with them while they're doing their testing. Um, who is it? I can't say who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a shot, man. <laughs> Thought I could catch him. I'd love to see. I'd love to see what that. I'd love to see the results of that. And okay. When it's done. So. Um, this is some of this, uh, some more specifications. Uh, That's fantastic. The uh, patterns exhibit a floor to ceiling characteristics. So we designed this from a bottom up type of approach as far as opposed to a top down from a ceiling mounted point of view for a floor mounted point of view. So it has a slightly larger spread going out so that it'll cover uh, a minimum height of two and a half feet. Um, the, they say that the average for a user device is around three feet. So we designed for two and a half feet. Um, it's a, I discussed the asymmetrical vertical beam with because of the rectangular planar design. Um, and then we, have, we, we etched arrows into the PCB on the antenna so that now that when it's in, in the uh, tile, uh, you can put that arrow in the direction that you want your, your maximum radiation to occur. So we kind of made it easy for you to place the antenna depending on your coverage and once you do your site survey. Um, the antenna does radiate, you mentioned a question, it does radiate below the floor. So, but one of the things that we did to limit the radiation is that we have an absorber on the, um, on, the, on the pigtails of the antenna to limit some of the radiation below the floor. In your case, we probably want to just remove them and it'll <laughs> work for you. But this just shows a, three, this just shows a 3D, a 3D uh, patterns of both the 2.4 and 5 gig. So coverage versus capacity. Um, so the Omni antennas are used for coverage design. We can use them for high density designs when you need more AP count. And that's like what we mentioned earlier in the stadium um, and LPVs when under the seat uh, designs are uh, um, small Omnis, small confined area for high density. Then for directional antennas, they typically use high density designs with channel reuse within the same floor space as required. And you have very high ceilings, greater than 25 feet and are available. Um, and then the locations, uh, catwalks, high beams, et cetera. So what we like about this raised access floor tile antennas, it can be used both for coverage and capacity. The client devices are closer to the antennas. And these devices, like you said, when you have a lot of users around, you get absorption. So with that absorption, that limits the coverage area, which reduces interference. Then you can use power control to limit the coverage area for high density, and then you can increase the power um, for, to get more of a coverage. Dennis, yes. you mentioned in the LPVs, you, have, uh, you make enclosures for those under the seat locations. Yes. Have you thought of putting this in the lid of the enclosure? So we've we're, so so we're looking at doing some planar designs for enclosure lids and um, for um, for some other seats. Actually, uh, looking at a design where the antenna actually goes in the seat as well. So we we're fielding a lot of those types of um, inquiries. 
I have a question. With, yes. With all these unique antenna designs, um, a lot of the venues are starting to move, move towards you know, Wi-Fi based location services and analytics, mm -hmm. um, which rely on the access points knowing a lot about the RF environment and where the clients are and being able to report that information accurately. Right. Uh, just putting access points in the floor and railings or anything like that with these highly directional antennas affect any of that? So um, we've just started looking at it for these, but we've looked at it in other designs where, where it hasn't been in a, we haven't seen an effect. So, but for specifically for this design, we haven't started looking at it for a location-based services type of application yet. Okay, I mean, a lot of the antennas you make correlate to existing vendor antennas. Mm -hmm. But things like this, right? This, there is no, you know, I can't select that in the NMS and say, well, it's close enough. Correct. Cor no, so. you're absolutely right. So with CMX or Cisco location-based yeah. stuff, yeah, you're, you're correct. So, the, yeah, I, I haven't gone through and tried to match this to something that they have in their system to see what it would be. Okay. And how, how do you survey for this? I mean... You go in with Ekahau and say the access point is zero feet high and yes. flip it. And yes. It's just yes, and we, we've done that. And then in a some few slides, I'll actually show you a survey uh, that we actually did in a, in, a, um, in a data center where we did and walked and did a survey as well. Okay. So uh, Specific absorption, concerned this may happen. So a lot of people, when you talk about specific absorption, <laughs> now you're talking about heat. Like I want to <laughs> wow. thank someone in this room that gave me a suggestion of adding a funny slide. So thank you. Uh, but one of the concerns now is that now you have antennas in the floor. You have people walking over them. You have the possibility of someone maybe sitting on it. What's the effects of the radiation into the body? Because now they're closer than 20 centimeters to the actual antenna, right? So, did you get your picture? I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we did was uh, we took the antenna and we sent it to a third-party test lab to, to test specific, specific absorption rate. And uh, there are two criteria that we looked at, right? Um, one for the head, which is close proximity, very close, um, where the um, specification is 1.6 watts per kilogram. And then for the body, the extremities, and that's four watts per kilogram. It's not as stringent as the head. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to test in worst case usage scenario, which is someone sitting on the, sitting on the antenna. They don't know they're sitting on an antenna, but they're sitting on it. And Based on that, we did the testing at uh, the spec of 1.6 watts per kilogram. And then we also did it on the body. So typical use of scenario is someone standing on top of it and it's radiating. And based on that, the maximum power out of the radio or the access point can be up to 23 dBm. Worst case scenario is someone lying or sitting on the access point if, uh, to reach the uh, limit of 1.6 watts the power level can exceed 15 dBm. So do you recommend then if, if you're gonna be deploying the, the race floor antennas to cap your APs at 15 dBm? Yes. Or tell Good to people know. not to sleep on the floor. <laughs> yes. So, um, and, and, um, so with, with, with one of, our, one of uh, our customers of this antenna, what they're doing is they're gonna they're going to use APC on their access point, and they're setting the limits from 10 to 14 dBm. The floor antenna is in the Ekahau um, survey software tool. So I wanted to show you some um, actual site surveys that we that we did perform that we performed using Ekahau with 3702. Uh, EAPs, the power level was set at 10 dBm. We used the 1260 panel and the survey area was 50 feet by 80 feet. So this shows the site survey. It was an old um, data center. And as you can see, you have the floor panel and then we have some raised floor tiles around the, uh, the, uh, the raised floor panel antenna. 
And this was the collection walk path. So we walked through all of the different uh, cubicle areas on the backside around and then back around and then on the backside. This shows all of the different access points that were placed when we were doing the testing. Now, what we were trying to find out was how many access points would it take to get, uh, they wanted around minus 55 to minus 58 uh, signal level. That was their criteria. So how many access points would it take to uh, achieve that in just this environment with no uh, obstructions or anything like that and um, figure out the number of access points that it would take? So based on, based on that, it, it, it took six access points um, to, uh, to cover the area that they were looking to cover. Um, so you see some uneven distribution. That could be because of the controller and the transmit power varying. But this was what we came up with. So it ended up being uh, six access points to cover it. This is at 2.4. And then at five, um, the same thing. So got a little better coverage or in the five, but remember that at 2.4 we was at 3 dBi and at five we were at 6 dBi. So then the next thing we wanted to do was um, say, so what would happen if we started having obstructions because um, at, the, at the Y-Pros conference, we, uh, I, I did a little, the little 10 minute tech talk and some of, the, some of the questions that came back was, so what happens if metal is placed over this or some types of obstructions? I don't think this, is this will work or anything like that. So um, we pretty much, what we tried to do in testing this is we, we tried to break it performance wise for Wi-Fi. Um, what, would we, what would have to be done for it not to perform optimally and for the AP to not perform? So right now, this is uh, one of the APs. This is one of the cube areas, which was a uh, picture right there at, at the access point, uh, SSID AP01. Um, the signal strength was between minus 67 and 55 in the gray and minus 55 and 34 in the colored area. So, and this was at five gigs. So I only looked at a couple of uh, 2.4 or presenting a couple of 2.4. We did it for all of them, but for the sake of time, I wanted to present, but since it's gonna operate at five gig, we're gonna use the design of five gig um, in a lot of the uh, slides that I show. Dennis? This, yes. This has made it into Akahau as well, right? <coughs> yes. Yes. <clears throat> so then we say, what would happen if we had three obstructions? <laughs> so we didn't have a lot, we didn't have bodies, right? <laughs> So we used 50 pound bags of potatoes. As you can see in the background, I had a lot of bags of potatoes to work with, right? Are they from Boise? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so we, took, uh, we took chairs, we set them, ones on the access point or, or, or around the access point, 50 pound bags of potatoes, and we looked at the uh, radiation, the coverage of that access point with the potatoes on it. And this is the access points. You see that um, you're getting some, some degradation or a spread of what you currently have, but that's because you got some type of blockage, but you're still getting a good coverage. And then this is at five gig, same thing at five gig, uh, slightly smaller footprint. So then we wanted to, we did 10 obstructions. So you have three on the access point, we put four in the cube, and then we put three on the other side of the cube, just to simulate bodies that were in the, in the cubicle area. And then, and this is uh, the obstructions. With 10 obstructions, this is how it performs uh, at five gigahertz. So the next thing we wanted to do is what happens if someone's sitting on it or the antenna is totally covered. So we took the potato, the 50 pound bag of potatoes and placed it right on the antenna. And at 2.4, as you can see, the signal strength is minus 67, went real down and right up just at a point, it's at minus, fit, slightly higher than minus 55. But as you can see, 
um, you still get some coverage, but the coverage is totally degraded. Now, I'm only showing um, specifically one access point, but what we found is with all six access points on, you still get coverage to take, take the users of that access point if this type of situation occurred and that you couldn't get good coverage. <clears throat> so let me see. So this was at 2.4, this is at 5 gig. You're getting more losses at 5 gig, so it's a much smaller footprint. Now, does Tesco sell potatoes for these tests? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to get them and uh, expense them, so. <laughs> so the next thing we wanted to do, we wanted to look at another area, um, and which is the second cube on the left-hand side with the access point and look at the heat map. And this is the heat map at five gig. So then we wanted to say, okay, we, we, we took the potatoes to simulate a human body and put it directly on the antenna. What happens when someone's standing on the antenna? So we put someone on the antenna, we reran the test, and as you can see, you got a, you got a lot of degradation or pushing out or spreading out of the signal based on him standing on it. Now, one of the things that um, we've seen is that, <clears throat> and as, as a po uh, um, specifically with the potatoes, we placed the potatoes directly over the antenna, which covered the antenna. But you move that, you move that sack of potatoes two inches either way, and your coverage gets better. Because as, as long as part of the antenna, it doesn't have anything covering it, you, you, you'll, get, you'll get adequate radiation performance. And then this shows <coughs> if you move your cube wall and your cube wall happens to sit over the antenna. And this is what we see when we do something similar to that where you have a cube wall over the antenna obstructing the antenna at five gigahertz. It's more likely to happen than a bag of potatoes showing up in my office. Uh, yeah, but, but at the end of the day, that's, that's really no different than moving any other obstructions throughout your, throughout your facility, whether the APs are in ceiling or not. You move a big ass filing cabinet in the way, you're gonna have the same problem. Right, and then, and then the hope is that, you know, when you're doing the design, that you don't plan to put anything over it. I know some things happen right. as far as moving things, but when you're going through the design, you wanna put them in open spaces, but we wanted to, you know, some of those questions came up, but we wanted to just make sure that we tested the antenna in a lot of different scenarios. Just put more things. in, just, just sell more. <laughs> now, so one of the things was what will happen if something was spilled on the carpet? So now the carpet is wet and it's over the antenna. So this shows um, without an obstruction, which is a wet towel, and then with the wet towel. Someone's got to have a joke. I know. I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that is that two four or five gig? That's five gig. I think two four would be worse, wouldn't you? Okay. Um, any other questions on the floor tile, raised floor tile antenna? When you so say as you the... can see, we tried to go through a lot of scenarios to just give different options of what would happen if certain things occurred, obstruction and those types of things, and, and, and when you're going through your design cases or uses cases to make sure. So all of the ones with unobstructed had just the uh, five, foot, um, five foot walls from the cubicles and just the chairs, the tables and everything. And then the obstructions came when we uh, added the potatoes or the people, people standing in those. And we did a lot of other things. We, we placed someone coming in and putting their backpack on them. Uh, someone had a dolly and rolled it over and it had metal in it and those types of things. And as long as you had at least an inch or so space between whatever was on it and the antenna, for instance, with the dolly, you still got radiation, adequate radiation going out. How long before you guys make an enclosure it's a raised tile that you, if this proves to be an effective way to deploy before you guys make something that you can just throw on the ground and run a you know, piece of conduit or something to it, you know, so that you can retrofit something that doesn't have a raised floor. Never trip hazard. No, not if it has little ramps on it. You would it. not be able to get that by. <laughs> just saying. 
Yeah, you wouldn't be able to get it, get it by anybody, is it? And one, uh, oh, one other test we did, I, I didn't have it here, was that we took a vacuum cleaner. What if someone's running a motor or something over it? How would that affect it? So um, pretty much we just tried to do anything, any scenario where we thought that would affect it just to see the performance. And even like in the, in the instance where we had the sack of potatoes over it, the other five APs took up the slack of that one with the, other, with the clients. So the next, uh, the next concealed antenna product that we want to look at is what we call our junction box Wi-Fi antenna. And that's what we have here. So pretty much what we did was we put an antenna in a three gang junction box a directional antenna in a three gang junction box so that you can put it on the wall either above or below and with the face plate you can paint the face plate with non-metallic paint and no one would know that it's an antenna the cables go behind the wall go up to the ceiling to mount the access point <clears throat> so we have two versions we have RPTNC and an RPSMA version um, and then um, like I said, you have the face plate, so you wouldn't even know that an antenna was there. Um, it's designed to be installed within drywall, and you put it in just like any other um, junction box. And then you tighten the screws behind it, and it goes in, and it tightens it to the wall. Can you pass that around? Real quick? Yes. Is that a directional? or? Yes, it's a directional. <clears throat> and one of the things uh, that you'll notice is that you have a some arcs down the bottom and above it is a pivot point you can get 45 degrees of articulation with that so if you needed to mount it high and and uh point the pattern down you can do that as well what's the pattern on it? Uh, hmm? what's it's the a pattern on? it's a directional i'll go in the next okay. slide i'll go over the, the parameters of the pattern but you have that up you have that you have that option to do that and then if you're if you if you're mounting it down below you just turn it the opposite direction and now you can tilt it up to 45 degrees going up. <coughs> <coughs> and then the versions of access points that uh, RPTNC, of course, Cisco versions and RPSMA, Aruba, Atran, Arrowhive, Maru, APs, that it supports. <coughs> so the specifications, um, vertical and horizontal beam with 75 degrees plus or minus 15. Um, you have two vertical and two horizontal. The gain 5 dBi on the um, 2.46 dBi on the 5 gig, and that's even including the cable loss. Uh, front to back ratios, 9 and 12 respectively. Isolation, 12 and 20. You can put up to 20 watts in. Um, then you got the gain box dimensions uh, only, and then with the cover. So where's the AP go? So the AP will go up on the ceiling, Oops. or if you have a crawl space. That, that's if you have a gang box up near the ceiling. Right. With a hole behind it to get to the. Yeah. So that's a if if if. But that's got some substantial it's a six length lead. to the cable. But you still have to get to the box up to the ceiling and over to wherever you're going to place the AP. Right. But if you put the AP in the ceiling above the sill plate, right? Right. You know, just That's still a lot more yeah. cabling than putting mounting an AP to the ceiling. Right, but if you like, yeah, it, like in like psych wards or something, yeah, where, where you where you know you you must not have any exposed assets. You you incorporate that into your design as opposed to doing an AP in room. Right, you would do the AP above, and you would just design that in. Yeah, like I'd mentioned to you guys previously, it almost would be nice to have that be one more gang. So it'd be it'd be four gang where you can have that piggybacker mm -hmm. on the back side of that to put the access point into as well so that you just tilt it all into the wall and then right. everything is self-contained right in that little yeah. unit. Yeah, and, and we're, we're, we're investigating that as well, so yeah. <clears throat> and these are just some photos that we took of the box in quote unquote in situ and some usage scenarios. Uh, pictures may not be optimum locations, but just for illustrative purposes where it's an antenna, but you don't recognize it. 
as being an antenna. How do we know those are actually antennas and you're not just, you know, <laughs> pulling the wool over us? Well, <laughs> that's the magic of pictures, right? <laughs> I can say what it is, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is. But oh, no that's the intent. <laughs> There's no AP body. It's just, so, a, just, just the, the antenna. Just the antenna. Sorry. Sorry. It could just be a plate. You say you can paint the plates. Can you buy any triple gang blank cover plate from a hardware store to put on there that's yes. black stainless steel yes. instead of painting it? Yeah. Okay. It, it's, it's the standard hole dimensions as far as the gang box and the plate. I well, not want to use stainless and, steel. He said besides stainless steel. Besides. Okay. And these are <laughs> these are old work boxes. If you, can you get new work boxes if you if you have an open exposed wall and, and transplant the elements into a different container, right? Because these are these look like the regular. Yeah, but you'd have to put the. Since when did we all become Bob Dila? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you if you've got if you're doing new construction, right, then the then it's these like wouldn't else. work, right? You would want to you would want to screw them up against the studs or something along those would lines. Would you? I wouldn't. Even well, even in construction, let, let the let the rockers put all that up and then go through and put that in, so you don't have to worry about them trying to get it right around your box. So if we had to transplant these and in, internals into a <laughs> new work box instead of an old work box, is that something that you'd support? Yeah, but there would be some work done. Sure. For instance, cutting the arcs in cutting and those types in, yeah. of things yeah. to mount it. Okay. 